At 16, Washington embarks on a bold career path, charting the properties of rich landowners. Surveying is perfectly in line with his ambitions. It allows him to rub elbows with influential families. At the same time, he can scout potential acreage for himself. We think of Washington as an eastern planter with his Mount Vernon estate, but really he's our first western hero. Uh, he looks to the west. He sees the potential for the future of America in the west. Mastering the frontier will give his resume a critical boost. But on the brink of the French and Indian War, he remains dangerously naive. His ambition blinds him to the frontier's perils, and the risks he takes there will almost cost him his life. Autumn, 1753. Both England and France are eyeing unclaimed wilderness to the west. The British governor Dinwiddie of Virginia needs a messenger to deliver a warning to French forces moving into the Ohio Valley. At 21, Washington has just joined the Virginia militia and despite his inexperience, can't resist the opportunity to impress his English superiors. George is so full of energy, is so full of self-confidence, and claims to have such great knowledge of the frontier, a knowledge in many cases that he didn't really have, uh, that Dinwiddie decides to commission him with his job. Deep in the Ohio wilderness, Washington meets with the French commander. He delivers the governor's message and is eager to return with the French response. But here, his inexperience and youthful recklessness catch up with him. In an effort to make up time, he decides to split up his party, leaving most of the gear behind with his men. He and a guide named Christopher Gist continue alone through the woods with no protection except their own muskets. Washington and Gist are moving along and they pass this village called Murdering Town, which is not a very auspicious name. And an Indian emerges from this village and offers to accompany them and help them along. The Indian proceeds rapidly in front of them, ostensibly looking for something. He doesn't hit anybody, but Washington is stunned. He doesn't know what to do. Gist reacts immediately and is about to blow his head off, but Washington makes him stop. Washington fears killing the man could spark hostilities between the British and Indians, so he lets him go. He immediately regrets the decision. Washington starts thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't have let him go after all, because now he's going to go get his friends. So Washington and Gist head off through the woods, going as fast as they can. They reach the banks of the Allegheny River and decide to build a raft. But it is poorly constructed, and the water, treacherous. They hit some chunks of ice. Washington's off balance. He tumbles into the raging river. But Gist grabs hold of him saving his life. The two men crawl onto a tiny island in the center of the river and hunker down for the night. But the miserable conditions prove an unexpected blessing. The next morning, the two men woke 
and saw that through the night it had become so cold that the Allegheny had frozen over. And they're able to walk across it. Washington's journal of the entire trip is published and is distributed throughout the state of Virginia. This journal is the first in a long line of heroic embellishments. It downplays his mistakes and is carefully crafted to bolster his reputation. And for the first time in his life, he gets a little bit of fame. 